Hello, I'm Michael Gregman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about making eyes. And while the idea of making two eyes, separating your territory into two sections to have a living shape, the general idea is relatively simple, but in actual practice, it can get a bit tricky. So I'm going to show you some of the shapes that might be a bit hard to fathom. So this shape we have in front of us is a, a white group that has been surrounded mostly by black. White is attempting to divide this territory into two. So it looks like white has a section of territory here. And white has captured this black stone. So white has one more section right here. For instance, if black tries to escape with the stone, this will do no good because the, even though black has extended once from that stone, it is still in a target and white can capture with this stone. So that did not work for black. Otherwise, if black plays an Atari from this side, threatening all three of these white stones at the same time, that is, if white plays away, black would be able to capture all three stones. In this case, white would just answer here. And indeed, white does have an eye here and an eye here. So white has divided the territory into two sections. Black might continue with this move and white plays here. This would be an illegal move for black. It would be captured as it stands and it would not be allowed to be played. Black can play here and white has to answer that because black's next move would be capturing the white stones. However, if white does answer it, there's no problem. And now white has a more basic two-eye shape. Going back to the beginning, there is a way to make one of these white eyes a false eye. This is what we call an eye that looks like an eye, but it's not going to be. So black bumps against white here. White can still capture this one stone. White captures, and black's two stones are in Atari. So black backs up here. Now at this point, Black has taken two key points. These two stones are falsifying white's eye. And how that happens is the fact that both of these diagonals not being connected shapes, black can later play a move from the outside and put four white stones in a target. If white plays away, black can capture the four stones. The fact that in order to connect those four stones, white actually needs to add a stone here where white was hoping to make an eye. That means that that was actually a false eye. It, for a moment there, it looked like a real eye, but it wasn't. And so white has only one eye with, with this group and the group will die because black can just fill liberties and it will not survive. So something like this might happen if black wanted to actually take it off the board, black could do so by continuing to play moves, filling white slivers. In actual play, black usually doesn't even have to do that and would leave it. And after playing this original sequence with this move to take away white's eye, black would be able to leave it. Okay, let's go back and, and make a different position. And here we have a position where it looks like white has divided the white territory into two sections. There is an eye here and it looks like there is an eye here. And white is very close to having two eyes there. For instance, if black just starts to attack from the outside, white will connect at the key point here, and white will indeed have two eyes. Both of these points are illegal for black to play, so white is perfectly safe. However, black can play from inside here, and this is an example of playing a stone at a point where it will be immediately captured, but it's okay because black is going to get a result out of that. So black's correct move is to throw a stone in here. And this black stone has one liberty. It's an Atari as black plays it. That makes it a legal move. It has one liberty. But it also means that white will immediately be able to capture this black stone. The problem for white here is that these two lines are diagonal. It means that these seven stones are not connected to the six stones on the top. So when black continues to play here, 
those seven white stones are going to be in the target. If white plays away, then black can always capture here. So it's it's just dead. If, if white connects here, then white is left with only one eye. So this is another example of a false eye. When black throws in here, an actual play, white would probably realize that it was dead and give up at this point, or just play away, play some other point. Okay, in this shape, the question here is, what is the status of this black group? And it looks like black is trying to surround a small territory on the upper side, and white has completely surrounded the black group. So how does black make a living shape? And this is a problem that I decided to show because it's a bit counterintuitive for black to be playing a move that is not what would come to mind immediately. So we'll start with black expanding the territory. This is the move that seems to be the intuitive move, making the territory as big as possible. The problem with this move is that white can play an Atari here, and if black connects the one stone, like this, it turns out that black has only one eye. So in this case, expanding the area was not the right answer. Black plays here, and this move successfully divides black's territory into two. Black has already established this eye here, and although white can come in once, black has established another eye. Here. So it's these two eyes that black has made, playing at a key point. Just to go back to the beginning here, when you have a shape like this, which looks like it could be alive or dead, and you want to find the next move, the first thing you should think of is a way to expand your area if you're trying to make a lot. If white were trying to kill black, white's first idea should be to reduce the area. So it's a very natural idea to play a move like this, which is trying to expand black's area. It's only after you find that this does not work then your second idea should be to play what is called a vital point. It's a point that, in this case, divides Black's territory into two. And finally, we're going to take a look at this position, which is a bit amusing, I think. It's an example of a special position in the corner. It's Black's turn to play, and it looks like Black might have a hard time dividing this area into two eyes. Black has this area, which looks like it's going to be a black territory here, but it's very small. Black actually can play the key point here, the vital point, to make two eyes. So first to give the wrong move, just covering here, again expanding it, does not work in this case, because white can play inside here, and this space inside the black territory is only going to be one eye. Black can capture two white stones, white can capture back. It's important to remember that the players take turn playing here, so it's not as if black can continue playing two moves. In this case, black will not be able to make any eye except for this one that is right here. So black is going to end up with one eye. We could add a lot of white stones to demonstrate. Eventually white could start filling liberties and put black in Atari like this. In actual play, white doesn't have to do that, so the fight would end at this point. So black's correct move is to play here, making one eye first. So black has made one eye here, and is trying to make another eye here. If white plays some move on the outside, black can play here, and black will have a very common two-eye shape. So this was relatively easy to understand. The question comes, what happens if white plays here? But it turns out that white will not have time to save these three stones when black plays an Atari from behind. In the corner, sometimes if you're on the first line in the corner, it takes a number of moves to save those stones. So in this case, if white connects here, black will just capture the five stones. Therefore, if white connects on this side, black will capture the three stones. And in this case, it's going to make enough room for a second dot. White takes back taking the one stone, black can cover here. And so black has ended up with an eye at this point, and an eye at this point. To go back to the starting position, when black plays here, in actual play, white would not continue to try to kill the black group, and would probably play away. White's local move 
would not be this one because it loses points when black captures those three stumps. So with this video, I showed you some unusual cases of making two eyes and some examples of full size. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. So like it if you liked it and sign up to my channel if you want more videos like this. Thank you for watching.